morning. Welcome to this lecture for the ongoing course on sustainable architecture, where today we will be discussing about the relevant codes and standards for uh, implementing sustainable buildings, sustainable architecture. So, if we talk about the codes and standards which are prevalent in India, we see that there are different types of standards and codes which are uh, available. However, all of them are not mandatory codes. There are several codes which are uh, voluntary code, there are some which are mandatory, some which are partly mandatory. So, uh, some codes are prepared and they are available at the central level while the implementation is held, the powers of implementation are uh, resting with the state governments. So, some states have mandated it, some states have not mandated it. So, the codes they vary and there are different types of codes. So, in this lecture I will very quickly take you through what are those different kinds of codes and what is the content which is there in these codes. We will not go in detail over the content of these codes because some of the content we have already taken in part of our lectures and some uh, is still untouched, but you can go over and look at these codes because these are huge codes and volumes. So, the first and most important code that we uh, will consider today is National Building Code. All of you uh, who are taking this code and are architects are already familiar with National Building Code. So, when we are talking about National Building Code and uh, before I go on detailing about what uh, NBC National Building Code of India is, uh, as I was just mentioning that there are some codes and standards which are voluntary. So, NBC is a voluntary code, part of it some sections of it are mandatory while most of it it remains a voluntary code. There is ECBC at the central level, the ECBC is a voluntary code and ECBC has been uh, taken up by different states, it has been modified to suit the specific requirement of the state and it has been mandated in some of the states for some types of the buildings. Then we also have model bylaws which are again not mandatory laws, these are not mandatory but these are also voluntary codes and they help the states to formulate their own model bylaws. Model, uh, set of laws. So, these are the main codes which are available at the central level. In addition to these codes and standards, we also have rating programs. So, we have uh, also seen that several of these rating programs are applicable in our country. We have IGBC, we have GRIHA, we have LEED, BEE star rating for buildings and we have EDGE which is being uh, practiced, implemented in our country. These are also voluntary codes. So, when we are talking about the enforcement with the help of these codes and standards and how green buildings or sustainable buildings are being made using these rating programs, all these have a role to play. So, we have these IS codes and standards which are mandatory in nature. So, all the building owners, facility managers, they are mandated to follow the IS codes and standards. Now, these IS codes and standards have been referred to in NBC which we as architects often refer to and while we are making green buildings and sustainable buildings, we are also referring to NBC now. NBC is also substantiated with ECBC. There are local bylaws which are taking clues from the model bylaws which is again connected with how NBC uh, handles and then there are green building rating systems which are taking clues for from NBC, ECBC, model bylaws and the building whatever the building project is partly it is governed by the mandatory laws and uh, sets of standards and partly it is governed by the voluntary set of laws. In case of green buildings and sustainable buildings, the green uh, features are largely voluntary in nature as of now as far as the standards are concerned while the rest of the uh, requirements for example, as far as structure is concerned, as far as the uh, building height and habitable spaces and minimum dimensions and all of these things are concerned, they are all governed by the mandatory uh, uh, codes which are the IS codes and standards. So, if we look at all this, 
NBC, ECBC and lot of these others they form the voluntary set of uh, codes yet they are very very important in uh, driving the agenda of uh, green buildings and sustainable buildings. So, here we are talking about national building code uh, uh, as the first code. National building code is a comprehensive building code and it talks about almost all the features and parameters which are related to uh, the building, sustainable building and buildings in general. And it addresses a lot of these different issues right from the right from the administration to developmental uh, controls to fire safety, building materials, structural design, construction management practices and safety, building services, plumbing services, landscape development and we also have asset and facility management. And in the latest version of NBC which was released in uh, 2016, we also saw addition of a chapter which is part 11 which is approach to sustainability. In the earlier versions of NBC 2016 this approach to sustainability was not there. Now with the addition of this part 11 approach to sustainability the sustainable features in green buildings or in buildings become an integral part officially. Prior to this when the National Building Code was first published in 1970 and then it was uh, revised in 1983 and uh, 1987 and 1997 subsequently, none of those had any reference or any discussion about the green features or sustainable features in buildings. So, the new chapter part 11 which was added to National Building Code of India brought sustainability to the main stream and now it is not only the green buildings which need to follow these features all other buildings and constructions which are going to happen will have to take care of these uh, sustainable aspects. However, this entire uh, code remains voluntary in nature it is more of a guidebook it is more for guiding the design and construction of buildings. So, when we when the discussion around approach to sustainability and inclusion of a chapter on approach to sustainability was happening, we realized that the world at large is discussing about green buildings and there is a green bu movement, green building movement of sort happening and India is witnessing that already through the rating programs, voluntary rating programs and uh, codes like ECBC had already come into picture by the time uh, part 11 approach to sustainability was added. And given the kind of heritage that we have inherited, the uh, sustainable constructions, design of buildings that we have inherited, it is imperative for a country like ours to lead this green building movement from our country. And that is what collectively the growing voices led to the uh, inclusion of part 11 approach to sustainability. So, if we look at this approach to sustainability, we can broadly divide the contents given in this part 11 approach to sustainability in 8 distinct uh, parts. These are not as they appear in the code, but this is what they largely cover. So, in part 11, we talk about siting, form and design. We talk about external development and landscape, envelope optimization, materials, water and waste management both at the building level and site level, building services optimization, constructional practices and commissioning operation maintenance and building performance tracking. So, all these uh, broad parts cover the entire content of chapter 11 approach to sustainability. And if we look at all these contents, we can also see that the first two are largely related to the site planning, the next two are related to building design, the next two are largely talking about building services and the last two are discussing about the construction, operation and maintenance of building. So, right from the uh, conception of the building design 
till the construction and uh, occupancy of the building all aspects of buildings life cycle have been covered through discussions and different uh, sections in this part 11 which is approach to sustainability which is the essence of sustainable buildings that we are not only focusing on one uh, phase of the building's life but it starts from the early uh, discussions about how the building should be designed till the final delivery of the building and even post occupancy all of that has been comprehensively covered in this part 11 approach to sustainability the next code which is very relevant for uh, sustainable building design in india is energy conservation building code this code and we are here referring to energy conservation building code 2017 so ecbc was first uh, developed and uh, published in 2007 with the help of USAID which is the United States Agency for International Development and later in 2017 it was further revised with the help of USAID only under this bilateral partnership uh, program called PACE DTA. ECBC largely talks about the energy conservation in buildings. So, it is not discussing about any other aspect of sustainable buildings but only energy. However, when it talks about energy, it talks about all the aspects of energy which goes into a building. So, it talks about building envelope where the envelope affects the performance of a building in terms of its energy performance uh, here. Uh, it talks about the consumption of energy through different types of uh, usages for example, lighting, HVAC, service hot water, pumping. So, all these systems which affect the energy usage consumption of a building are covered as part of ECBC and besides that the uh, addition of renewable energy to it is very briefly handled, but not in detail. So, this is what this entire code covers. It talks about the energy conservation in building. So, if we look at the role of ECBC here in our country, it sets the minimum energy efficiency standards for design and construction of commercial build buildings and it encourages the energy efficient design or retrofit of buildings in order to not constrain the building function, comfort, health or productivity of the environment yet reduce or optimize the energy consumption. Through ECBC, we have tried to address the local design conditions and help in improving the existing construction practices. So, when we talk about the local design conditions, they have been addressed by taking into account the different climatic zones. So, uh, the country has been divided into different climatic zones as we have already seen in our previous lectures. So, the same classification of uh, climate has been used in ECBC and that is what uh, it uh, incorporates in terms of the local design conditions. And there is an emphasis on integrated building design approach where the design, the construction materials and the active systems. So, both the passive system and active system along with the design has been taken care of in ECBC and that is what it emphasizes on. So, that is uh, integrated building design approach which it uh, talks about. So, if we look at ECBC and other certification programs. So, he here we are talking about the voluntary uh, programs again and ECBC is voluntary at the central level while it has been mandated by some of the states at the state government level where the implementation authority lies. So, if you look at these compare these uh, certifications programs. So, we have ECBC, we have LEED and IGBC, we have GRIHA and we also have environmental uh, impact assessment. There are different organizations which are driving these uh, certifications. So, ECBC is uh, mainly governed and driven by Ministry of Power under which Bureau of Energy Efficiency was formed and uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency largely looks after the operations related to ECBC. LEED and IGBC are uh, they were initially looked after by CII 
Green Business Center. Now, only IGBC is being looked after by CII. Griha is directly under Ministry of Non Renewable Energy Resources, MNRE, and we have uh, Environmental Impact Assessment, where uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest, MOEF, is largely looking after the Environmental Impact Assessment. Out of all these, ECBC is partly mandatory because it is mandated in some of the states and not in the others. The other two are voluntary. So, these green building rating programs are in a sense voluntary uh, in nature still in our country. While environmental impact assessment is mandatory, but it is applicable only for large projects, very large projects where EIA is mandatory. For ECBC, LEED and IGBC, GRIHA, Almost all they directly cover the commercial buildings. However, LEED and IGBC and GRIHA have also diversified and they uh, take care of residential buildings, institutional buildings and many other different types of building, uh, buildings as well. Here LEED, uh, IGBC and GRIHA which are the green building rating programs and uh, EIA. They do not have any uh, minimum mandatory requirement for the connected load or the demand of the building in terms of energy while ECBC gives that uh, requirement where at least a connected load of 100 kilowatt is required or a contract demand of 120 uh, kilowatt um, kVA is uh, required. However, this condition changes from state to state. So, depending upon the uh, size of the buildings which are commonly present in the states, this range has been uh, varied. So, hill states for example, Uttarakhand has a very small requirement of this connected load while uh, the states for example, Rajasthan they have a higher connected load requirement. If you look at the scope of these ECBC is only talking about the energy efficiency and energy conservation while the green building rating programs uh, like LEED, IGBC and GRIHA are talking about sustainable design and uh, green building where they cover all the aspects of green buildings as we have uh, discussed so far, water, site, uh, environment, energy, everything. And environmental impact assessment talks about the environmental impact which is directly governed by the international standards. So, if we are talking about the linkage of all these with ECBC, we see that the green building rating programs in India and also NBC uh, in its chapter part 11 approach to sustainability, they directly refer ECBC for energy efficiency credits and the discussion on energy efficiency. So, mostly all the prescriptive requirements, mandatory requirements, also the simulation approach, whole building simulation approach and uh, trade off approach all of this is directly referred to from ECBC. And here uh, environmental uh, impact assessment is not related to uh, energy performance or performance of buildings individually, but it is uh, linked or it is related only to the large site development. So, there is no direct relevance connection. So, uh, if we talk about the significance of ECBC, we see that ECBC is instrumental in regulating the building's thermal performance and energy use depending upon the climatic zones. So, ECBC mainly encourages the climate responsive building design through its passive design approach through the design of building envelope and selection of right kind of building materials. It also encourages the use of uh, passive features in design such as daylighting, shading, natural ventilation, incorporation of solar energy into the design which should as we have already seen through the past few lectures, it should be the first step towards designing a sustainable building. So, we must take care of the passive design features and address them first before moving on to the active systems. And then lastly, it mainly focuses on energy performance of buildings rather than the green building design as we have already seen. And when ECBC 2017 was published brought out the impact of ECBC possible impact of ECBC was estimated and it was seen that if all the buildings in constructed in the year 2017-18 which is the year when ECBC was launched the latest version of ECBC 
if all the buildings were ECBC compliant were to be made ECBC compliant it would yield in a potential saving of around 4.3 billion units of uh, energy energy consumption and would save around 3 million metric tons of CO2 it will it would offset that much of emissions. So, there is a huge potential of savings energy savings and emissions uh, reduction if ECBC is implemented and mandated in uh, the entire country. So, if we look at this compliance mechanism we have briefly touched upon this compliance mechanism while we were discussing uh, about sustainable buildings in previous lectures. So, there are two distinct methods of compliance one is the prescriptive method where the building complies with all the sections and prescriptive requirements mandatory measures and prescri prescriptive requirements given in the uh, chapters from 4 to 7. In case prescriptive method is not used then we have two options one partly we can trade off where the envelope can be designed and there can be a trade off within the different uh, features of envelope only. So, we can trade off between the performance of wall with that of fenestration or we can trade off between the performance of roof with that of wall or uh, like that, but the overall energy performance index remains the same. So, the proposed energy performance uh, index for the proposed building should be better than that of the base case, but all of that is largely the prescriptive uh, compliance approach where at least all the active systems they have to follow the prescriptive uh, method. While the second method is whole building performance method here the entire building could have various uh, performance parameters we could change both the active systems as well as passive systems and internally we could do all those changes in the proposed building, but in the end the EPI energy performance index of the proposed building should be better than that of the base case or the standard building. So, in the end whether through an uh, enhanced uh, investment in passive design features or in active uh, features overall the building performance has to be better than that of uh, the base case as specified through ECBC. So, for whole building performance method the system that we have to use is that of simulation. So, we have to use the simulation tools where we make a computerized model of the building in terms of its energy use the kind of materials which are going to be used its orientation and all the parameters which affect the energy performance of the building. We simulate and estimate the amount of energy which is going to be consumed by the building or we, uh, we may also estimate the uh, thermal comfort which will be achieved throughout the year and we compare that with that of the base case or the standard building. So, two cases will be simulated and they will be compared for their performances. This is what we will be uh, talking about in detail in our subsequent uh, lectures and we will look at one of the whole building simulation tools and uh, see learn the process of whole building simulation. So, another set of standards that we have here is ASHRAE standards. As far as the sustainable buildings or green buildings are concerned we have few standards which are published by ASHRAE which are of use. None of the standards as per ASHRAE is a mandatory standard, but many of the organizations across the world refer to these ASHRAE standards and they use it for guiding setting the standards or guidelines in their uh, projects. So, ASHRAE is the American Society of Heating, Refer Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers and it has a huge member base and it is active in uh, more than 132 countries. So, that makes it uh, evident that it is quite a popular organization and ASHRAE has published more than 
200 standards and they are also active. So, these standards are used to establish the guideline or the baseline for several of these green building rating programs. When we are talking about these ASHRAE standards, so LEED for example, uses ASHRAE to set the standard, the baseline of the building, the base case. While when we are talking about the IGBC and we are talking about uh, the, uh, the GRIHA rating program, for setting the energy benchmark, we use, we refer to ECBC. While almost in many other rating programs, green building rating programs, ASHRAE is the one which is used. And here we very quickly discuss about what are the different types of standards which are available uh, through ASHRAE which are of relevance to us. So, we have uh, the first one which is most important which is uh, ASHRAE standard 90.1 which is on energy efficient design of new buildings and uh, LEED directly refers to ASHRAE 91, 90.1 to define the base case and all the uh, prescriptive measures for the base case. The next is standard 189.1 which is the standard for design of high performance green buildings. Standard 62.1 is for ventilation and acceptable indoor air quality and this is used to uh, determine and define the uh, air exchange rates and the leakages from the building. ASHRAE standard 55 is for thermal environmental uh, conditions for human occupancy which defines how the uh, comfort hours, unmet hours and met hours should be calculated. So, all these four uh, standards together they largely drive the whole building simulation approach which is used in the green building rating programs. And the compliance in ASHRAE 90.1 is exactly the same as we have for ECBC where we have all these building systems envelope, HVAC, uh, hot water systems, power, lighting and others. And there are different options where we have prescriptive option, trade off option, energy cost budget and there is a simplified method which is exactly the same as uh, we use in ECBC. So, this part the compliance approach is absolutely the same. Now, when we are talking about the whole building performance method, uh, we have this appendix G performance rating method which is which largely drives the whole building simulation approach method. And this is a methodology to calculate the energy performance beyond the minimum requirements of the standards. It mandatorily requires an hourly energy simulation and it helps to establish the baseline reference building criteria. This baseline building uh, criteria that I very uh, often refer to, we will be discussing it in detail in the subsequent lecture. So, Appendix G is referred by USGBC for lead energy performance credits. So, it is only for energy performance that uh, ASHRAE standard 90.1 and then Appendix G is uh, referred to. The last here which I want to discuss as part of this codes and standards is SP41 which is the handbook on functional requirements of buildings other than industrial buildings. And SP41 uh, largely covers which is relevant to sustainable buildings, it covers heat transmission through building sections. So, there are detailed calculation procedures and uh, uh, thumb rules given to calculate and to understand all these concepts, one which is heat transmission, the second which is thermal performance of building sections, then orientation of buildings, building characteristics for various climates thermal design of buildings, influence of design parameters and mechanical controls. So, all these topics have been discussed in detail in SP 41 and it has detailed calculations formula available where even before designing the building a reference to all these uh, sections would definitely help us in designing the elements in sustainable buildings correctly and in an optimized manner. So, we will stop here with this discussion on uh, codes and standards and we will move on to discussion related to 
whole building performance approach in our subsequent lectures. Thank you very much for being with us. See you in the next lecture.